that had to do with, uh, uh, as I remember, uh, you can have the gun in your house, but somehow you had to have it secured. Yeah, if you, uh, say for instance, had a pistol, the, uh, if it was a semi-automatic pistol, the action had to be pulled back, the breech was open with a trigger guard in place which the argument was that prevents a person from using this gun for self-defense as it would take so long to basically reassemble and set up, it would have defeated its purpose I see. for it. I see. Well, I'm going to let you give your opinion on what's going to happen with your case, but probably what happened with that case probably has some yeah. impact on it uh, in a minute here. But this idea of incorporation without without the oversight of the United States Supreme Court, and not everything gets to the United States Supreme Court. This one is. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, obviously the court is now opening the door to bring on Second Amendment stuff, and we're gonna, we're gonna tell you what we think. Right. Okay, but prior to that, which is really is pretty recent times here, you're right, uh, End of story. I mean, Montana lets you do what you want, and mm -hmm. Chicago or Illinois doesn't, right? Right. One of the things that will happen here, Chase, if your counterparts in front of the Supreme Court, when I say your counterparts, I'm being a little facetious, but those people who, right. petitioners like you, uh, win, won't this cause change of at least some, if not every state statute throughout the United States of America? Oh yeah, if the pet petitioners prevail, it's going to, it's not gonna be as drastic as one would think because there's a lot of legislation already in place and the petitioners weren't asking for um, any of the previous, like the 1968 Gun Control Act or the 1930s Act. They're not looking to have that overturned, they're just looking to have that one um, Chicago ordinance overturned. I see. And then once that's overturned, I'm sure there's going to be other challenges to other sure. other state laws. But basically using um, Heller as a guide is what the petitioners were wanting. Common use weapons like long rifles, shotguns. Basically what you classically think of when you think of a gun, a hunting rifle, shotgun, pistol. They're wanting to just be able that you can keep them in your home, but it's still subject to rational regulation. Right. So if a, a city wants to require that you know, you can't own a machine gun. That's under the 1968-1930 Act. They're not trying to overturn that. I They're see. just trying to basically allow for the possession of a firearm for self-defense. But as these cases kind of worm their way through the system, Chase Hiller and, and you know, your most recent case that, you say McDonald? McDonald. McDonald, uh, which is, well, will, will we know McDonald by the end of this 2010? The end of this calendar year, unless there's some massive unforeseen circumstance, I see. it should be decided before probably Halloween. Oh, okay. With those two decided, Heller and McDonald, and admittedly the scope of, uh, uh, of McDonald was focused on that Chicago ordinances, but it would seem that state legislatures all over the country then will start to take a heads up and yeah. look at their laws as almost an ounce of prevention because if they are termed too restrictive by some other petitioner and assuming that the petitioner prevails in McDonald, um, they'll have to make some adjustment to their laws. Oh yeah, they'll have to be adjustments, but they have, there have been so many Second Amendment challenges in the last 70 years. Most of them have not made it to the Supreme Court. They've made it to a district court and, and stopped there. Yeah. Either it's been you know, they've lost standing, you know, they, they won, or it has just basically been something that the Supreme Court said, we're not deciding this issue right now. But now they are. But now they are. They've, they've pretty much opened that door. So they have all these old cases that basically set up the framework for you can do this, you can't do that. I see. Well, here comes, here comes the, uh, the big one. Albeit a moot court competition, the issue is based on real facts, which it is exactly the same facts as those folks that will be arguing before the United States Supreme Court, correct? Yeah, they, it's, they've already actually argued it. Okay, so. So, so nothing, same facts you worked with, right. they're worked with. 
And again, I can only ask your opinion at this point in time. We can come back later on and review this after the court rules. But today, uh, May 21st, in your opinion, how do you think the current U U.S. Supreme Court would come down on this constitutional issue? Um, having argued both sides, because we did have to argue in the preliminary rounds both Oh, sides. you had to go both ways. Yeah. Um, the first time I argued was respondent, second time was petitioner, the third time was respondent, then I had petitioner from then on out. Uh, having looked at the case law, having looked at what scholars have written, having looked at the composition of the court, I look for them to come down on the side of the petitioner, but not as broadly as the petitioner wants. I think it's going to be a, a more narrow decision, something like Heller because it's it's a very murky issue there's this case basically traces its lineage back to the late 1860s I see. because you have the 14th amendment gets ratified in 1868 right right then That's you have war. yeah then you have uh, a line of cases called the slaughterhouse cases mm -hmm. which are the preeminent incorporation cases okay. and they came out strongly opposed to incorporation and there were several cases after it that also came out strongly against incorporation. But once you get into the 30s and 40s, you are starting to see the court pick up selective incorporation. I see. They incorporated the First Amendment, they incorporated the Fourth Amendment, bits of the Fifth Amendment. They're, it's slowly starting to, basically from the 30s to probably the 80s is when the court really started to pick up incorporation and incorporate a lot of rights. This is just basically a logical progression to basically tie up the loose ends that sure. they've not already incorporated. I mean, there's bits of the Fifth Amendment that's not incorporated and bits of some of the other amendments that haven't been. So, so your read is your counterparts may win. They may not win everything. Right. I, I think the, the petitioner is going to prevail on merit, but I think that the respondents are also going to win on what you can call rational regulation. If that's the case, and that's probably for a guy who's had the opportunity to get on both sides of this, so I, I think you're as, as good of a scholar on this as anybody today. So, uh, But if that's the case, I don't know if we're done yet. We won't be. We, there's absolutely no way we'll be done. I mean, if, if, if it's a narrow ruling, the, the court says, yeah, a little bit too um, on the regulation here thing, uh, what you say, the registration. Yeah. And, where the gun is delivered to and things like that better better loosen up on that a little bit but we still see the reason for uh, a state's ability to what's well, actually state it's state police power isn't it right okay so that means that's what i guess makes the interest makes for some people the study of law kind of interesting is that we'll be back again with another complex but different set of facts. Oh, well, actually, I would say before, if this gets decided before Halloween, you will have, there's about a dozen cases floating around right now that district courts have said, we're waiting on this decision. I see. So you're going to see all of them hit at once. Oh. Because as soon as this decision comes out, the, the lower court will rule, and most likely at least half of those are going to get sent up to the Supreme Court. Whether or not they accept certiorari or not remains to be seen because the court has historically not liked gun cases. They just they won't pick them up. District court judges are and just wait here alone. Let's see what the Supreme mm -hmm. Court comes down with. Uh, and they make their decision. I assume they would make their decision in the same vein or view as how the Supreme Court came down. Yeah. So what you're saying is a whole army of other petitioners says, no, we don't, we don't agree with that, and we'll take them back up. Yeah, you're, uh, the same thing happened after Heller. Once the Heller decision came out, a lot, of, uh, a lot of people tried to use Heller as a basis to bring in incorporation. There were a lot of cases that failed pretty early on using Heller as a base because the court literally said, we do not want to touch incorporation. That's why Heller went up. It's a federal enclave. They can basically rule broadly there and it not be incorporated against every, every state. Okay. So there, it was a very narrow, narrow decision that people were trying to use a lot more broadly than what they could.
So, so I would say the same thing will happen once McDonald gets decided, whichever way it comes down, those opposing the decision are going to send all these cases that are floating around right now up for appeal. Once so it's decided. all about incorporation. Right. I mean, and for the benefit of our, of our viewers, incorporation, those rights that were given to all Americans at the time that the Bill of Rights was written to our Constitution, will they carry over in their most pristine way to, to the state legislature? And, and, well, the federal government doesn't exactly have police power per se, but the states do. Right. And if petitioners continue to prevail, then that police power will be somewhat diminished respecting the the Second Amendment, yeah, much like the First Amendment and speech and... Right. Because, I mean, even with the First Amendment, one of the most broadly construed rights we have in America, if you look at it, yes, we have a right to free speech. You still can't yell fire in a theater. That's right. the classic example. You're exactly right. Which, with what most of the people in support of the petitioners are looking for is you can own a gun, you can't, you know, use the gun to commit violent crimes. Sure. You can't own certain classes of weapons. That's, you know, that's what we're looking for. I guess it's pretty interesting uh, to, to, I think as Americans, we should be proud of the fact, though, that this, the, the press, the speech, the First Amendment, religion, I mean, mm -hmm. that's much what this country was started on, probably not done yet. I mean, there's probably still First Amendment cases that oh, yeah. wind their way through the court. But this one here is a little more landmark. I mean, this one, the nuances of it, are, as what you said, have been in pretty much established by another generation of Supreme Courts, but now now the, they're going to look at the gun. It's interesting why they changed their mind to, to do it. Well, the, uh, the reason they gave in Heller, if you look at some of the things that uh, Justice Scalia wrote right about the time that Heller gets decided, they were having so many cases have requests for certiorari that they just wanted to settle it. I see. They wanted to just basically say, okay, here's the rules, operate within these rules. If it's outside of it, we'll take it again. But they're just trying to eliminate a lot of these cases that keep coming up yeah. because for some reason in the last probably 10 to 20 years, gun cases have been huge. They've been yeah. plentiful. For the benefit of our, of our, of, of our of our viewers, Chase, when you say certiorari, what does it mean? Uh, basically, that the court will accept arguments. Okay. They'll hear the argument and decide on it. If so they deny certiorari, the case stops it's where done. it's at. So they keep on coming, but it is the court's dis discretion whether right. they take it or not. But they made the decision to try to set some ground rules on this, right. which is all about incorporation. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Obviously, not the last chapter on it. And by Halloween, we should be looking to see how they come down on this. Uh, be a decision. I'm sure law students will, all legal scholars will read very, very carefully because yeah. it may open the door to lots of different arguments. Uh, we're coming to the end here, but I did want to ask you, uh, what was your motivation to participate? I mean, you, you, you're a second year law student. Um, really just kind of a couple of my friends were on the moot court exec board and they're like, listen, this is, this is your type of problem. This is the Second Amendment. This is your because people knew you. Yeah. Your friends knew you had a long history in hunting. And right. They're like, this is this is you. I see. So, so the subject matter of it was. So that's what near originally got me interested in just that, and I'm competitive. I wanted to see how, see how I stacked up. So because this well, was the first one I'd ever done, except for a, a small small oral advocacy thing in first year. Well, I'd say you need to be congratulated. She did a fine job. Well, our, our time is coming to an end. Uh, I, th I thank you for being our guest on Law Talk today, Chase. To view this episode and others, go to www.czclep.org. I am John Celebrezzi, and I thank you for tuning in. To keep up on Medina County and other legal issues, go to www.czcourtreporter.com, a function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. At CZ Clip, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens.
For a complete listing of dates and times for this telecast, tune into WCTV Channel 15 or log on to wadsworthcity.com and follow the links to WCTV. I'm John Celebrezzi. Please join me in getting a better understanding of the law.